Hello and welcome to this episode of my knitting podcast. My name is Irma and you can find me on YouTube, Instagram and Ravelry as Wolwerkjes. It has been quite busy the past few weeks uh, and I have quite some things to show you. So just let's get started. Uh, normally I start with what I'm wearing, but I'm not wearing any knitwear today. Um, Usually I do put on a cowl or something, but it's just, I just came from, from outside and it's just not hot, but warm enough to be wearing few clothes. So um, no knitwear today, but I do have a finish, finished object to show you. So I'll we'll put it on for you. I finished a uh, hat. Uh, I just did a... 2x2 two two rib and I started off with a smaller needle and then I um, I didn't increase stitches but I just went up a needle size so I have a little bit more space over here and it's tighter at the brim so it fits nice and I did I, I, I have a thing that I want my decreases to be <laughs> neat <laughs> so I decreased in a way that you get uh, nice lines and I did it on four points so uh, that's how those decreases came around I if there are people interested I can write down how I did this um, not really complicated just paying a little bit of attention to what you're doing with your decreases and not just doing something um, look and <laughs> just see what happens no I just I like uh, when those things are neat. So I will put it on for you. It's a little bit pointy, but I quite like it. You can flip it a little bit up or down just the way you want it. Maybe I should have, you can slouch it even. Maybe I should have knitted it uh, a little bit uh, longer, but I think it's, it's just fine it's uh yeah it's nice the uh, wool i i used the yarn i i used i don't i really don't know what yarn it is um i had knitted a scarf in this yarn and it was one of those scarves with pockets and i just improvised something but it wasn't working it was too long to lay over the shoulders and put your hands in the pocket and it was too short to wrap around and then put your hand, hands in the pocket so i didn't use it but i thought the color of the yarn was very pretty and it was a ways to keep it in the in the shawl because of in the scarf because it it didn't get any use so what i did i ripped out the whole shawl so i got an enormous <laughs> ball of yarn it's the size of my face even bigger um, and I at this uh, I, I first uh, knit this head out of it um, I had a few smaller uh, this came out in one uh, big ball because I used it was crocheted and I used uh, magic knot to tie all the ends together so I got one really big one but there were a few pieces where I need to cut the yarn to unravel so that's why I used the leftover bits and pieces for this head and I think I will knit a really nice cozy cowl out of this big ball of yarn so finished object and I really like it I hope I didn't have I did not mess up my hair too much I think it's fine. I got a haircut. I was talking about it last week that I should get a haircut and I did get a haircut and I'm very uh, pleased with it. It isn't short. It still has some length. I can still put, a, put it together at the back of my head so that's really nice but I'm very happy that I have hair again in my face and I know a lot of people uh, don't like it when they uh, have hair in their face because it's in the way or irritating or whatever but I I really love to have hair, <laughs> hair in my face because I think for especially when you put on a hat or something you need to have something 
I need to have something in my face. I don't say that everybody has, but I feel more comfortable with hair in my face than when there is no hair there. So I'm very happy with my haircut and I think I'm going to go a little bit more regular to keep this bit uh, short. It's like a fringe, but a really long one. So you kind of have to take it to the side to uh, to see something. But yeah, it's it's really nice. So enough <laughs> about my hair. Uh, finished object. I have another piece that looks like a finished object, but isn't. And I will show you. Um, I had another scarf. Uh, I ripped back last time and I said I wanted to knit I don't know if I told you what I wanted to knit out of it but I definitely told you that I wanted to knit something out of it and it's this yarn it's knit up so I will show you just like this uh, I don't know the fiber content because it's uh, left over not left over, but it's from an old project and I don't have the ball pens anymore. I just don't know what this kind of uh, yarn is. And I wanted to knit sleeves out of it. So um, like a bolero, just some sleeves you can put on over anything uh, with short sleeves you're wearing. Just to be a little bit cozy and um, warmer in the evenings. And what I first did, you can see it looks like it looks like a finished object. Um, what I first did is I knitted the sleeve, and when I was around here, I uh, um, I bound off the stitches at the back of the sleeve so I could knit the um, back piece. Uh, but I left a few stitches on the front with the idea that it would come in a little, and that the um, edge, the color I uh, wanted to knit on afterwards would um, be somewhere around here. But I finished it. Um, when I finished it, um, the pieces I knit extra at the front in stockinette just pulled back into my armpit. So there was a lot of fabric going around with no use. <laughs> So what I did, I picked the stitches uh, where I started the extra piece of stockinette and I picked up the stitches at the edge where I started the edge and I knit the piece in between open. I cut the piece in between open and unraveled it and grafted um, the pieces back together. So you really have a sleeve and uh, a back piece and the uh, edge around it but it's really looking weird I think I need it a little bit too tight on the arm and uh, I picked up too many stitches at the uh, neckline so there's too much fabric in my neck and it's just not working so uh, and <laughs> it took me a lot of time knitting and it took me a lot of time uh, adjusting and it's still not, not fitting. But what I'm gonna do, I think, is uh, pick up uh, uh, stitches at the end of the arm and cut it off and maybe lit, knit a little bit of ribbing and then I just have a sleeve I can put on. And uh, which was the whole idea, only they're not connected at the back when I do it like this. But I think that's fine. It's just to be a little bit warmer in the evening. So I think that's the best way to go without um, losing all my <laughs> knitting time I put into this. So kind of finished, but not finished because I need to adjust it. I'm not going to put it on because it's looking really, really weird when I put it on like this. Feels happen. Just deal with it and make something out of it. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. I think those are all the things that... Oh, I have a half-finished object. So, not done yet with things that are kind of finished. 
I finished the sock. And I finished the sock that was languishing around and I didn't feel uh, like knitting this at all. I really wanted to knit on my other sock, but I just, I just did it. I just, I finished it. Uh, I grafted the toe in a really weird way because I was looking some television when I was knitting this and there went something really wrong with the decreases because at the time I had the right amount of stitches at the front. I had still way too many stitches at the back, so I did something wrong. Can happen when you're distracted. I think no one will see when it is on my foot, so it's fine. Um, you can see now how ridiculously long I knit my leg. Not ridiculous. There are a lot of people that are wearing their socks in this length, but I have really small feet, so my socks look always a little bit weird when I <laughs> when I knit them like this um, and uh, I already have started the other one even but then I was kind of done with it again I don't know why it's not I do like the self patterning of the yarn it's fun to see it changing <laughs> you can't call this started you you can cannot call this started it's a it's a beginning <laughs> and I will I will work on this sock a little bit more frequent frequently than I did on the first because otherwise this won't get finished at all but yeah another pair of socks for in my uh, sock basket not yet but halfway through <laughs> And I was really proud of myself that I finished this because I think I started it in January and it's still just, yeah. So I was really proud of myself. I picked it up and finished it. So now on the go for the second one. <laughs> so I think those were really all the things that are kind of um, finished or half finished or finished in a way but not really finished <laughs> so let's go on to works in progress and i have to see no okay i will start with the one i've started with a couple of weeks i think a few months now no not really months like really months but i think like maybe from end of march maybe and it's my boxy by holy look telly of course i don't think you can see any uh, change at all but it's grown i think five centimeters or something a little bit more than two inches and it's quite something when you have this many stitches on the needles i'm still in love with it but there are other projects um uh, with a lit little bit more interest in the stitches so um, I most of the times use this when we're not when I'm driving the car but when <laughs> we as a family are in the car I take this with me and it's easy to work on or on the couch when we're watching something that really needs my attention in some way then I'm, I take um, this as uh, my knitting project it's unbelievably soft and um, I can't wait to wear this so I should work on it maybe a little bit more than um, I'm doing now to get it finished before the hot weather is over again <laughs> so one work in progress still on the go still loving it um, yeah it just takes a lot of time to knit a boxy and I don't mind Okay, other work in progress that has been shown on this channel quite a few times now is Kala by Natasha Hornby, who is the designer of Moonstruck Knits. And I'm on the second uh, lace part. So this was the first part of, not lace, did I say lace? These are cables and some yarn overs this is not lace um the fur it's so it's uh, 
pattern that I, I told you last time. It's so hard to show. Oh, and I'm showing you the back, which also doesn't help. It's a really hard pattern um, to show off because it's so much more beautiful in real life than it is in um, on camera or in pictures. So this was the first uh, cable part and I'm now on the second uh, line of cables and then there will be more uh, broken rib and the border will be with a lot of uh, the flowers, the color flowers. And there is really depth in these flowers, which is really nice. And um, I was uh, lucky to uh, be able to attend a class by Natasha Hornby at the Dutch Knitting Festival. We call it uh, Breidage, which means uh, knitting days. And it's like a marketplace with a lot of stands with yarn, of course. And uh, there's also the possibility ability to uh, attend some classes and I attended a class by Natasha Hornby uh, about shawl design which was really interesting and really got me motivated to maybe try some things of my own but it was really fun and um, I told her about uh, this shawl and that it is so hard to show off the three-dimensional um, part of the flower because it's it's in real life it looks so different than on the pictures and then she gave me a tip that one of her test knitters blocked the shawl upside down because uh, of the depth of the flower you get like a bum at the back where the flower is and when you uh, block it just flat with the right side up, you will flatten out those bumps. And those this test knitter uh, really liked the, th the 3D effect as well. And she blocked it upside down, down, and that's why the bum of the of the cables uh, still is there. So you still have this uh, 3D effect even after blocking. And she was saying that she. Um, was almost she almost rege regretted that she that she blocked it uh, right side up. Of course, it's still a beautiful shawl, but it's really fun to. Um, I think I'm going to try that. Block it upside down, so you really uh, see the depth of this cable pattern, which is really nice. Um, there are a lot of stitches <laughs> on the on the needles now. I think I'm one third to the second through the second uh, cable repeat so still quite some work to do but it is a lovely project to work on and i'm on my third skein now and i got five and i'm thinking that maybe i don't have enough yarn but we will see about that I hope I do because it's hard hard to get this yarn in the exact same batch. So I hope I will be able to finish it with this amount of yarn. We will see. Only the future knows. <laughs> so those were two works in progress. Um, I did not knit on my other sock so I'm not going, sh going to show that now. I Let me think, what did I do this week? I knit on, uh, I cast on the sweater for my husband again. I will show you a picture of um, how it will look. Uh, and I cast it on on DPNs and it has a reason because I did not want to knit it on my wooden needles. I have two uh, interchangeable sets of uh, needles and one is a Knit Pro um, with all the colored wood. I don't know the name by heart. I think they're called symphonies or something. Um, but I didn't want to knit on those because it's knit on a 3mm 
needle and I do have them in 3 mm. They don't uh, produce the 3 mm anymore, I think, because they break easily. And I've noticed that I did uh, break a needle um, when I was knitting on this sweater. So I didn't want to try that again. And my other set of interchangeables is... Higher Haya Sharps, which I love. I use them for almost everything. Um, but this yarn is z plight, which means it's twisted the other way around. I don't know if you can see it, but it's twisted the other way around than uh, the regular yarn is. Uh, which gives it a little bit of a different effect in the knitting. It's more uh, fluffy because you untwist the yarn a little bit when you're knitting with it. But because you're untwisting it a little bit when you're knitting with it, um, your needles get more easily into the in between the plies of the yarn. And with I think when I knit this with my sharps, I will get that issue a lot because the needles are so sharp and I think um, I got for my birthday I don't know if I have laying them around I've got them here okay I can't find the other two but I got um, three sets of um, the Knit Pro Zing double pointed needles because I asked for uh, this specific uh, um, brand of double pointed needles to someone and I asked for the smallest sizes because I wanted to use them especially for socks and she got me the 2mm, the 3mm and the 4mm needles and uh, for someone who isn't a knitter it's really hard to pick such a present and I'm really happy with it. Um, I used the two for my socks and I had the three sliding around when I wanted to cast on this project and I thought I can do this on double pointed needles instead of the circular and those are metal so they're faster than the wooden ones um, and not uh, likable to break. You have to do a really strange thing to break those. Uh, and. Um, there, the point is uh, sharp enough uh, to, for me to like them because I like sharp points on my needles but not as sharp as the high high sharps so I think this will be the perfect tip for knitting this sweater but I only have them on double pointed needles which is fine because as you can see it fits quite well. You bunch up the stitches a bit more than you would maybe on a cable but bunched up stitches knit faster so that's totally fine. Uh, the only thing is that uh, that he can't try it on while it's on these needles because then it will stretch and fall off but that's fine. I will just um, see if it fits or not. <laughs> just go with it. <laughs> so that's why I cast it on, on these double pointed needles because these are three and those are two and a half. I don't really like them, they're a little bit too rough for me. Um, but um, those were the only two and a half uh, millimeter needles that were not in use lying around. So that's why they're casted on like this. And I'm, I can't wait to uh, be done with the hem and start working with these because th those are really really nice needles. I gifted a set of the interchangeables of these to a friend and it was uh, a guess if it would be nice but th the moment I felt them I was like oh I want those for my socks in the double pointed version. So that's really nice. So I started this sweater again with the ID when I wait until the summer is over I won't finish it in time for him to wear this winter so I just started it now and now I have a lot of time to finish it before winter so that's that um, let me see oh I will show you which um, sweater it will be it will be the 
this one. Uh, it's a book by Arne Carlos. And oh, it's a really shiny cover, so it's hard to show. But um, he was, uh, my husband chose the colors himself and he chose a natural color. Um, just the same as uh, in the picture and he chose a brown color for the contrast instead of the black so a dark brown and we will see how that works out but I'm happy to have started it again because I think my first attempt to knit this sweater was two years back and or maybe one year I don't know long time ago and um, my tension changed because I learned myself to knit a little bit different. And um, it was visible in the sweater where I changed my, um, my tension. So, and I don't know if, ever, if anyone else would have noticed, but I noticed it and I don't like it when I, can see my own mistake, so I just uh, ripped it out and now it's on the needles again after more than a year. But that's fine, it will get done one day. The only thing that has to happen is that he isn't going to be growing a lot while I'm knitting on it. I don't think so, he's quite stable in his, in his uh, figure, so that will be okay. But it's on the needles again and I'm very happy about it. And I'm thinking, I do have another project on the needles, but I'm not allowed to show you and I'm not allowed to talk to you about it. It's a secret test knit and I'm very happy to be able to do a test knit. I'm not going to say anything about it because it's a secret test knit and I don't want to be the spoiler here, but I can show you the yarn I'm using. And it's netting up really nice. It's like a greenish, olive greenish color. And it's really, uh, the, this yarn uh, shows off stitches really well. So it's really fun to work with. It will take up a lot of my knitting time the coming two months. So this will be like, three to four episodes. This is one of the projects on my needles. I can't share anything about it. When I can, I will. But just so you know that a lot of my knitting time is going to be in this project and uh, eats up the time of my other knitting projects. So that's why in the future episodes there will be maybe a little bit less knitting for you to see. But we will see how that works out. I hope I will be able to still work on my other projects as well. And um, it's only for two months. Then is the deadline. So whether, <laughs> whether if I have finished or not, I hope I will have finished by then. But um, whether I have finished or not, uh, after two months, I will be able to spread my knitting time out a little bit more again so that's really nice I wanted to show you the yarn I picked up came in a bag with a llama on it or is it an alpaca I don't know it's a really funny picture though it was really fun so knitting project work in progress can't show anything you will just have to believe me that it is a stunning design it really is so looking forward to the moment i can share it with you so um i already told a little bit that i went to the dutch knitting days it was really fun it was in amsterdam we made a day out of it me and my friend i told her to knit i think back in March or February, somewhere around there, I learned her to knit and she really liked it. And when I <laughs> when I had teached her, um, my next que question was like, do you want to join me to the knitting festival and attend a class? 
and she was like yeah sure so <laughs> i was really happy that she uh, picked it up so uh easy easily and uh, that she likes doing it so there are not that much knitters in my uh, direct uh, friendships so it's nice that i finally got one good friend my best friend that's knitting as well now it was really fun to attend a class with natasha hornby again she told us a lot of about uh, shawl shaping she showed off all her own shawl designs and we were allowed to um to pick a shawl pattern by her look at her patterns on ravelry her shawl patterns are really really gorgeous and stunning so my friend uh, picked up yarn to knit this uh, shawl so i'm um, really cu curious how this will turn out it is a really beautiful pattern she picked out really beautiful yarn and of course i will help her where i can to finish it because it's it's really stunning and she will wear it a lot i think it was the mara m-a-r-a no, M A R E. It's how you how you spell it. Um, it's a really stunning pattern, and I can't wait for her to start it because it's really beautiful. And of course, I picked up some yarns um, myself there at the marketplace, um, but not for the pattern of Natasha Hornbeek because I'm knitting one of her patterns right now, and I didn't want to have two patterns from the same designer on the go so when i finished gala i will look for yarn for one of her other shows but i um, got some skeins of yarn and i will show you and it was like a hunt which started out with this skein really beautiful by the danish dye lot really beautiful uh, hand dyer there were a lot of really beautiful skeins in her boots but i was on a mission and i had a project in mind which i will tell you after i've shown all the skeins which pattern it is but i knew the pattern i knew the amount of skeins i needed i knew that it would um the, that i needed five different skeins so I needed five skeins. I wanted them to be matching, but not uh, too matchy. So my idea was I will only buy one skein in a booth and I will find mat the matching skeins at the other booths. So it started out with this one because you have to start somewhere. And there was a lot of options still open, which direction. Um, it would go uh, there are blues and greens and uh, orangey colors in there and there are a lot of variation in the color in the lighter parts as well so I think it was a good starting point and then this one came around I don't know I think it was their own boot seascape yarn it's called I don't know if you can see and it was a really nice matching blue it's not matchy matchy that it's exactly the same blue but it's uh, close enough that it will uh, merge in so that was really nice but as soon as I saw this together I was like I like the blues but I need uh, I need other other colors as well otherwise it will be um, not boring but too, of, too much of the same so after I had this one I went looking for an orange and I found one at Walnut Verve it looks way more orange now on screen than it is in real life and it really um, blends in with the orange that is in the first skein uh, this is definitely tonal. There are a lot of the blue colors, but they're all a little bit different in this game. This is not completely solid, but almost like a solid. 
So that's also nice that there is different in the type of skein. So I had a variegated with uh, Stellina, I think it is. And I have a um, tonal and I have an almost solid skein. After this tree, I saw this one laying around. But didn't bolt it right away. I first went uh, looking around a little bit more. But this was directly like, okay, it's almost the same green that is in the first skein. So this one was in my mind, but not yet bought. And then my um, friend bought very lovely light blue with Stellina skeins to match with a really dark yarn she, she bought already. And the owner of the boot was uh, saw me uh, walking around with this, these and talking about a green skein I saw. And she was like, put this one next to it. And when I did, I was directly Soul because it brings out the light color of the first skein. There's a little bit more different colors in variation uh, through it, so it makes it a little bit more interesting because it could have been a little bit boring if I just uh, went for colors that were in this first skein. So I was really happy with um, the lady at the boot of the Bonaire yarns. <laughs> see you see it was really uh, really a perfect perfect match and then I went back to buy the green skein and I was done I had five skeins and those five skeins are going to be a Fertis's Unite show by Stephen West I um, I hear from everybody that knits a Stephen West pattern. Excuse me, they're falling down. I heard from every everybody that knits a Stephen West pattern that it's um, so much fun to knit. And I think we can imagine because um, the shapes he puts together are they're geometrical but not like all triangular shapes together or all rectangular shapes together. He, he matches different shapes together and changes the direction of the knitting. So I think it will be truly interesting to knit one of his patterns. And then I went looking and I was like, I think this one is appealing to me the most because it's, it's such a big cozy shawl and I like big cozy shawls so that's what I will be knitting but it won't be cast on until I have finished at least one other project but I think I want to finish my test knit and the color shawl before I cast this on because otherwise it will be too much and my brain can't handle it when I have too much projects on the go so I first really need to finish things but I think I'm on the right way not no new cast on yes I did have a new cast on I did the sleeves and I did the head those were both new cast ons but I think I'm doing quite okay with not casting big things on so always talk it the way you like it <laughs> the most yourself no I think I'm doing okay but I think this will be uh, laying around a little bit more and it is really nice to look at so um, it will be loved in skin for, for a little bit more and that's okay and yeah and I have to think about which colors I will going to stripe in which section so I will be busy with this in my head anyway I think those were all the things I wanted to show oh one thing 
it isn't yarn and I didn't bought it at the knitting festival but I ordered it with the yarn for my test knit and it is it was in my wish list for quite some time and it's this this <laughs> thing and you will maybe you know it but um, I think this one is by Prim and it's a needle holder for your darning needles and stuff and there is a I put it I put too much needles in there but there is a magnet in here I don't know if I can show you yes there there's a magnet and you can just put in all your needles and they will flip out like this so it's easy to choose which one you need and you turn it back in and they're all safe and they can't fall out and it's it's really really handy uh, there were a lot of needles in there already which I didn't know I thought I was buying it empty and I was like oh I can put all my needles in but now there are a lot of needles in because uh, they, it came with needles so that was really nice um, but I'm really happy with it because I have uh, children in the house and I have a cat in the house and I'm always afraid to lose needles and when I'm taking out a needle out of my sewing purse it's always like oh do I still got them all and it's always a little bit stressful so I saw this and I was like oh that's really something for me because they, they can't fall out unless you really really put an effort to it so I'm less afraid to lose one so that's really really nice it's uh, portable and I really love the color you couldn't choose the color but I really love the color so tip for you really really a nice thing to have so I think that's it a lot of talking a lot of showing things that are not finished yet or finished but not really finished um, I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you in two weeks bye <laughs>